fresh from the Texas lair here. This is a new tombstone called Hunter's Moon. And Hunter's Moon is a black cat themed tombstone picked by my secret reapy Lisa over at Halloween Forum. I'm excited about this tombstone because it uses all kinds of different things I've tried over the years and combined it into the one tombstone and added fluorescing. It really looks great live. So I'm um, excited to show you this. So the first thing is the moon is a contrast of texture. So you want it real craggly and the rest of the stone real smooth. So use that shaver to get it a real rough texture. And then use acetone to bring in the craters of the moon, deepen them up. And the tail is recessed, the body is at tombstone level, and the arm and the face sticks out. So bring that down with your Dremel and smooth it out. And the cat's head, that was taken from a bigger piece of foam that I cut down, but you could just use a half inch foam. Cut that out with the Dremel. And for the hand, that was a one and a half inch foam that was shaved down and graduated to add some nice depth. And now just kind of pick and prod at that hand to get it as realistic as you can. A tip for the Glidden Gripper, Put it on both sides and then blue tape the heck out of the stone to keep the seams nice and tight and then weigh it down. All right, well, uh, now we've put the hand into the base, cut it out, and continue to work on it to keep that realism. And to add some more interest to the claws, take some paper clay and wet it, and then lay it over the claw and smooth it out with a wet tool. Well, decided to get extra fancy with the base and I'm trying my hand at doing an egg and dart molding. It's found this on the web and I'm cutting out some spaces so then you can trace it out onto your stone so it gives you an image to follow when you carve it. How it's carved took the engraver at a severe angle and went around the egg. And then straight down, sharpen the edge of the egg and then the dart part angled on one side and then angled on the other side. And now making the point of the dart, angling that on one side and the other side. And then go into the corners and push down and sharpen those edges. Now you can keep going like I do here, or you can stop decided to make the darts a little bit more pronounced and the bottom part scalloped more. Sanded it down to smooth it. Again, it depends on what design you're looking for. And here you can also use a Dremel. I, um, I'm deepening it up a lot more here. Again, you're the only person that will stop you on how far do you want to go with the base design. Keeping that transition of the rough moon and the smooth tombstone, actually you can even use sandpaper to get that perfect smooth edge. Time to put the cat head on and see the little toothpicks. That'll help you keep gravity from sliding that off, but also weigh it down. Put the hand on and now we're gonna add some gravel. So put a big glop of foam board glue and some pieces of pink foam that you had left over. The acetone on these new lavender kind of foam, it gets all clunked up there, so scrape that off. And then paint it with fluorescent orange, just the moon. And while that's drying, paint your cat black again. And now we'll go in with red fluorescent paint and put that in the craters of the moon. And this is deep yellow fluorescent paint to add some interest and depth to the moon and add some dots here and there. I was looking at a real picture of a moon for this. And you'll also notice that there's craters that skip across when a crater hits and so making those trails in the moon. And that's using a bright yellow fluorescent, a different color yellow. And then finally, a white fluorescent in just a few hits. And this is it in black light. Paint the epitaph, but don't go too, you wanna have a little bit of that orange showing through. For tea staining, don't tea stain the moon part. So you may need a thin brush so you can get away with that. 
also don't dry brush the moon. Discovering with tea staining, if you change up the colors, you get a lot more interesting stone. This is a dark green and loved it. It makes it look mangy. Ugh. Uh, here coming up back over with another color. This is black again with some brown. So yeah, just have a little fun with that tea staining. Your dry brushing get a little subdued, so bring it back again. Just a couple of hits where it got all, you know, loosened up by the tea staining. And, uh, bring that cat black again, uh, a little lighter black because you want to have some of that tea staining showing through. And don't forget to use the flat black paint for your gravel so it looks more like tumbled gravel. Make sure you do that for your cracks in your tombstone. For the eyes, need a nice white background for the fluorescent yellow we're going to be painting in there in a second. Uh, and then also bring out those cat eyes. Paint the claws while you're at it. This is a cream color. Uh, again, you want that paw to be as realistic as possible. So coming in with a little black to give it some depth. And see the eyes are painted now? That's painted with a deep yellow fluorescent. The claws are painted with a white fluorescent. This dries pretty clear, which is nice. So in regular light, those claws still show. All right, time for some perma blood. <laughs> Glop it on there and don't forget to throw on some moss. Here it is, it's all done. Whew, I'm loving the tea stain colors, look at that. And, and I use some dishwashing liquid in the tea stain so it stains the stone more instead of just straight drips. It breaks up the surface tension. And uh, there it is at black light, this is twilight. <laughs> well anyway, thanks so much for watching and take care, have a great Halloween.